We are live. Welcome to 2022's Black Adam Review and Thoughts. So, I am going to start by telling you, this was a movie that I enjoyed a lot, and I respect, and I think some things really work. Overall, I thought it was good. This video will have some jokes, and I will get at least it's just I will get into at least some serious subjects. Now, I am not a teacher grading a test or otherwise trying to prepare someone else for a situation where you need to know the original text. Thus, when I look at how this diverges from the original text, I won't automatically say it's bad. I will consider if the changes make sense, even improve the original. Now, let's see. Yeah. And... Yeah, so, I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. And, yeah, so, I start this video with a review with zero spoilers. If I end up spoiling anything, I will verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger. So you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And as soon as I end the review itself, please note, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for the movie. R right, and I will not be warning before spoilers for other DCEU properties even in the review itself and yes I realize you know there is significantly more Marvel back there than there is DC I do love both Marvel and DC not equally but I do love both I just happen to only have two of the really great DC movies on DVD, that's all. Now, that brings us to. So, yeah, the movie is rated PG 13, and so is this video. Now, regardless of your stance on this movie or the DCEU, DC in general, I don't hate you, I don't think you're stupid or hateful. Right, I watched this in a movie theater because around here COVID is under control. And yeah, if you don't live in an area where COVID is under control, please do not watch this in a theater. No movie is worth risking spreading COVID. Even if you think that you yourself will be safe, there's probably someone you might accidentally spread it to that you don't want to spread it to. Uh, right, and I was only able to watch this in 2D, not 3D. And I suppose... Yeah, so this is perhaps a more progressive... I Actually, I suppose there is a certain balance between the progressive and the conservative in this movie. But for sure, you know... Like, most of the prominent, there are a couple of white people in this movie, but by and large, it is about, you know, Middle Eastern people, and, you know, the, their one, the, the, this one, um, nation which I wrote down the name of Can Kandak Can Can Kondok I think is how they pronounce it Kondok and yeah so you know it's not about and and they specifically call out you know let's see neo imperialism and there's there are multiple villainous white people and yeah, you know, I'm. I get why that might be frustrating to people who wish these would always be completely conservative. But I would say, you know, the world is changing, and yeah, media 
has to reflect the changing world, the changing priorities. You know, if this movie had been made, like, I guess let's go with 60 years ago, it would basically have been reversed. You know, the 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 bad guys in this movie would have been the good guys, and vice versa. So, I have read a bunch of comic books. I, I would read, you know, it was especially Spider-Man, but I read, you know, all kinds of Marvel and all kinds of DC, including a bunch of JLA. Uh, let's see, around 99 to 2007, but not only comics released in that time. And... So that brings us right, and yeah, I have only watched this movie once, and I started recording basically right after getting home from the theater. So the yeah the plot after nearly 5000 years of imprisonment black adam an anti-hero from the ancient city of kandak is unleashed into modern times his brute tactics and way of justice attract the attention of the justice society of america jsa who tried to stop his rampage teach him how to be a hero more than a villain yeah and that is like right there this movie doesn't really I mean I guess I guess the idea is supposed to be this is a team sent by Amanda Waller and we we explicitly see her you know ask Hawkman to assemble a team I guess that's why, like, you know, like, where's Batman? And the, yeah, just in, in general, you know, where are the Justice League members? You know, and obviously, like, in reality, it's this thing of, you know, how many of them, how many of these actors want to come back? And, you know, I mean... Aquaman's not here because his solo movie is, you know, his second solo movie is coming out and, you know, yeah. The Flash, because of Ezra Miller being really, really messed up in real life, you know, and yeah, Batman and Superman maybe because of casting issues, you know, maybe they don't want to play these roles anymore. But it does feel like very like at first I thought that this movie was just going to be you know the just the the JSA in the comics are you know are what the they had in the comics before the JLA you know so I thought maybe this movie was gonna be set you know some years back in the past and that would explain it but no it just kind of cause, I mean Amanda Waller's right there so this is clearly the same DCEU, you know, she's, this is the fourth appearance in the DCEU, she's one of the only people who keep showing up in these movies, same actress, and you know, Viola Davis and everything, so, yeah. Now, the, let's see. And, here we go. Yeah, so this was written by Adam Stikil, Rory Haynes, and Sorab Nor Shivani. And yeah, so Adam, I am not very familiar with. Huh. Alan the Chipmunks, the Road Chip. I didn't realize he was the, the you know 
I don't know if he was the only person writing that movie, but I didn't realize anybody who wrote that movie was still writing. Now, let's see. Yeah, and Rory Haynes, also not really, in, and has already written three movies. At least Adam had written nine. Oh, wait, never mind. Several of them are in pre production announced. And, yeah, it's also worth noting, you know, Adam, like, in addition to Alvin and the Chipmunks, there are a couple of other comedies. He's more known as a comedy movie writer than a superhero movie writer. And, let's see, right, and the... <clears throat> Rory and Sorab together, you know, other than this movie, they've also written Emergency Contact and The Mauritanian. And, yeah, the, the script... The script is a mixed bag. You can see where they had... Like, there are certain things that you expect to be in this kind of movie, and they kind of had to try to work that stuff in, even if it wasn't organic. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about the tone in the, in the director's section, but just, yeah, there's definitely some, there's, there's more than one movie here. There, it's, there's a couple of movies here struggling for, for airtime. And it is very awkward, but yeah, um, I thought that you know on the writing front they came up with some fun superpowers, and they did a pretty decent job of like working in these various you know yeah you know they. Uh, they bring out some of these JSA members, and yeah, it is legitimately cool to see. Like, I, I'm not sure I've re I've read a single story that they actually appear in. I've only heard of them, you know, heard them referenced and such, because they're just, yeah, you know, they're. I I have not read very much from that period of of comics. Not nothing, but not much. But the, yeah, uh, you know, it was nice to see some, some, st like, you know, I, I want to say her name is Cyclone. When was the last time we saw someone who could, like, mess around with, like, you know, she, she does, like, wind stuff, you know, and, like, other than Storm, it's, and let's see, last time, oh, actually, yeah. To be fair, Storm was in Dark Phoenix, but I don't know. It was it was kind of cool to see again, and yeah. One thing I will say, I really wish that they had just spelled out some of the powers, because especially Doctor Fate, like he could do th some things that I legit like. At first, I was like, okay. There's more than one of him. Does that mean that each of them has the same powers as the original? Or are they like illusions and, you know, you're trying to make sure that they fight the wrong one? You know, are we, is, is this Doctor Strange's ability to, to multiply? Or is this Sprite from Eternals creating illusions, you know? And... Ultimately, I, f I feel like the movie did answer my question, but at first I was like, I don't know. Um, I know that's basically the thing. You know, I had I had a similar issue with, you know, the the 2021 Suicide Squad, which is a movie I overall really love. But there were a couple of times where I was like, wait, what exactly can this guy do? That brings us right. So. Plot twists, I feel like they handled them fairly well.
Um, there were definitely some things that surprised me in this movie. And I would not say that there are too many or too few, or that they're too easy to figure out. I suppose there is, there's at least one major thing where, like, you maybe kind of get a sense, okay, there's something there that we haven't been told yet. And, you know, but, yeah, there were definitely things that really took me by surprise. That brings us to the direction. So, I am going to go ahead and guess that you pronounce it Jean Colette Serra. And, yeah, you know, in total, 12 movie credits, although one is in pre production right now. And other than this, oh, right, yeah, one of them is a music video. Goal 2, Living the Dream. I'm not sure that I would... Anyway, the only of these, of, of the things that he's directed that I've seen, is the House of Wax remake. Yes, with, you know, Paris Hilton back when everyone in the world hated her. Do, are we still supposed to hate her for, you know, good branding? I, I don't really... Yeah, if, you know, the, the take have done multiple videos on, you know, like, people were like, oh, you know, she's, yeah, words that I don't like to use. You know, she she's too sexually promiscuous and such when, you know, I mean, a leaked sex tape, today we call that revenge porn, so that's, yeah. Anyway. I only watched that movie because it was on TV. I didn't have to pay anything for it. And I, yeah, it's, you know, I kind of wanted to compare it to the Vincent Price original. The Vincent Price original, you know, I mean, it is, you know, it, the movie is showing its age, you know, it is like, uh, you know, wow, it's like from way back in the 50s, which makes it all the more impressive that it slaps. The 2005 remake is garbage. I do think that there is a chance, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, this isn't really a... I would definitely recommend the 1997 Italian horror movie. Ah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Um... Yeah, I, I swear I'm not going to spend forever on it. I'm going to do it on the smartphone because the computer does not love when I stream and use the internet on the same computer. And it is too dark and I'm way too scared of thunder. I need my thunder buddy for to be to be streaming on the the better of the computers. Anyway, uh let's see. So Wax something or other. Ah, crap. Is it really not going to find it? Um, okay. Who's... Yeah, there's no one in it that I know. Uh... The... Gah. Okay, anyway, there's... There's, um... Actually, if I just type out... So it, I'm almost certain that if you go to the original, right, 53. Vincent Price. A national treasure, RIP. And that brings us, oh crap, is it really not going to be? Okay, like I said, I, I'm not going to spend forever on it, so I think what I will just do... is... Yep. 
yeah, maybe I'll put it in the in the ah, what's it called? The um, Oh uh, yeah, that's right. The the for some reason, the the IMDb app is absolutely terrible about the Wikipedia. Anyway, yeah, obviously this movie is significantly better than House of Wax, and I feel like he did the best he could. But yeah, um, it's not the only you know, dark movie he's made. He also directed Orphan, The Shallows. Right, so, the... Did I not? Oh, that's right, I put it in the other, right. I will get the notes real quick. And here we go. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna quote a few fellow critics and then get into my own. So the yes, some of the critics were very harsh on it saying things like nothing in the movie makes any sense every joke falls flat you could tell stuff was changed during production there are a lot of off-screen lines explaining what's going on the tone is all over the place it's like it's three different movies black adam has no character all the interesting things are flashbacks or voiceover and he's too invulnerable so there's no real threat to him I do think you know they they realize that and it's not just about seeing him be badass over and over and over they make us care about some of the non superpowered characters in this and it really is more about him trying to keep them safe so it's not just you know he can't just stand still in a place and have everyone fire at him because if even one person fires on one of the humans, you know, that's... And, and at first he's like, I do not care for humans, but over the course of it, you know, he... Yeah. Some of the effects are great, but meaningless. Others look like cartoons, like stuff that was made 10, 15 years ago. I have to admit, I don't think I noticed any effects that I thought were less than, than really, really great, but... Yeah. So the um, yeah, the tone is definitely an issue, and it uh, you know I'm not saying that I I I like all three movies. I just wish that they had settled on one of them, and because like you know some of the time it's like this really dark, gritty, harsh you know really brutal like they really push the PG thirteen you know you know yeah the in in the movie he goes by Teth Adam and Teth Adam you know I mean it, you might not be surprised he has lightning powers you know that's one of the big things he will melt people with lightning you know and yeah but then at other times you have this almost like MCU kind of with with like jokes and I, I, I have to admit, I was surprised. They actually have very Flash-like jokes with with Adam Smasher, you know, the guy who can get really big. They actually have him say, does anyone have any snacks? I'm sorry, but it, you know, it takes a lot of energy to do, you know, and he gets his snacks, and then, you know, he's, like, screwing up some minor things and just, like... I mean, nobody liked, pretty much nobody liked that in, in the Justice League movie, you know. I was pretty shocked to see him still there in the Snyder Cut. Anyway, 
I've done like a four hour video talking about the Snyder Cut, so I'm not going to get too much into it here. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, and, and this whole thing with like, you know, yeah, I don't know if it's like toy sales or franchise building or what exactly, but for sure, like some of the, some of the members of the JSA, it's like, okay, you're kind of just trying to make them just slightly, you know, it's slightly interesting and, and to, to, to make people remember them. Which was also, you know, some one one thing critics said was you're not going to remember this movie tomorrow, you know. But they definitely have this thing of, you know, they're they're there's not they're not like obnoxious. There there's no chance that they'd end up obnoxious because they're not quite detailed enough to, you know, the there's no yeah and. Yeah, you have you have quipping and the the kind of you know if you have something serious, then right after you have to have a joke, kind of you know very MCU. And then this like, I mean, I I do legitimately like that it is saying, it is it is asking the question. It's not necessarily giving a definite answer, but it wants us to consider: Does it make sense to use violence? if you are fighting an oppressive force you know because basically when we get to the the present day con conduct is they they make sure to say oh it's a it's an international uh, you know corporation which you know there's like they could have just said you know it's it's a bunch of americans doing but but yeah and and again, like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of white people among the the bad guy, you know, the like like the goons or or possibly henchmen, and yeah, it it really made me think of the ah crap, what's the what's the um. Uh, Israel Palestine you know the the what's the word the the occupation of of Palestine of, of Gaza and the yeah you know does it make sense to use violence in that situation or should you you know, because for sure the yeah, I'm not. It doesn't look like at least the way they spelled it in the subtitles doesn't look like Kandak exists. I could imagine it is. Let's see if I if I go to Black Adam. Let's see. So um. See there, and okay. So that is yeah. So that is apparently how you spell it. That is what the um yes fictional North African nation and yeah originally it was Egypt yeah you know I I really got thinking of the, the occupation of the Gaza Strip and you know that is a thing that uh, like I suppose I'm not going to give an ultimate a final declaration here. What I will say is, I think it makes a lot of sense to, you know, I, I my philosophy when it comes to violence is that you are it, it, the only the only ethical use of violence is when it is preventing greater violence. And yeah, as such, if you are occupied, 
you know, it is okay to use force against those occupying you, or those working with the, you know, occupying you. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate, you know, the big blockbuster movie. This is a movie where you just sit and munch popcorn, and it's making you think, you know, maybe Hamas have a point. You know, it, it, I don't, I don't want them to be hurting people, but you can understand where they're coming from. And yeah, you know, no, no, the the. I think there are a couple of times in the action where it does just revolve around spectacle, but when you, by and large. The the movie does remember that this is not it's this is not very interesting, you know it's it's fun if you're like a kid and you're pretending ah you know I'm invulnerable like like Adam, but if you're actually watching like a story you know and that is something the story is not the best part of this but yeah you know there has to be some stakes there has to be something that you know Black Adam can't. Yeah, that, that he can't just shrug off. And, yeah, that is the, the death of these human characters. And, yeah, a, a bunch of the time, you know, and, and that's actually, I, I have to admit, when I watched the trailer, I didn't realize, like, you know, the, the guys you see in the van, yeah, they're major characters, you know, they're actually in the movie. I, I thought they were just there briefly to show, you know, oh, he can, you know, he can do this, he can do that. Now, yeah, so this opens with narration, info dump, and this, like for a while, it's, it's a montage, you know, you and, and it's just, I would have watched a two-hour movie that dramatized, I want to say, let's, maybe the first ten minutes of this movie, I really, really felt like it, you know, again, I love comic books, and in comic books, you can get away, you know, there's a lot of things where, like, characters you know meet a character you don't know. And that character just spends a lot of words, maybe you get some images, explaining the background. That You can do that in a comic book, but it's not very satisfying in a movie. And this is an issue where, because I get it, I, I, I don't know if it's all accurate to the comic, but I can imagine a lot of it is. And it's just, like, you should either have had, like, a movie... And, and I get it. I get it. They don't really want... They don't want an entire movie where Black... Where, where Teth Adam is not in the present day. And his, you know, his backstory is, like, what was it? 5,000... Was it 4,700 BC, maybe? Something like that. And, yeah. So the... the um. I, I get it. I get why they don't make a two-hour movie out of it, but boiling it down to just, like I I kind of the first Lord of the Rings movie has to open with a bunch of exposition. It just has to because otherwise there's no we, we don't we have no idea what's going on if you don't know the the you know yeah you have to have a little bit of background. And I actually I I met someone in in school once. Who said she couldn't get past that? But I, I don't. I'm not sure she realized how little of the movie it is. But she found it exhausting to watch. And you know, I think they do a really good job there. They don't spend more time on it. They don't get. They don't give more details. But here, for one thing, there's a lot of details and uh, like. And and there are these things where they, again, like at first, it's just montage. You know. This guy showed up in this place, and then he did this and this, and then we suddenly get a scene of like I don't know four or five minutes, and it's like, okay, I guess the story's starting, but then it goes to to more just like narration. And so, narration is not by. This is not cinema sins. Narration is not a sin. But, you have to be careful with how you use it. And here it is this thing of like you know am I am I supposed to be emotionally invested in what's happening here 
or is this a history lesson? And is this just stuff I need to know in order to? Because once they get past that, and we see present day Kandahar, and is this Kandahar? Kandahar? Crap. Yeah, now I have Kandahar on the on the brain. Kandak, you know, once they go from ancient Kandak to present day Kandak, it is like you you realize very little has changed. You know, it's and and that is sadly the case with some. You know, that's where the you know you yeah, Gaza has not been occupied for that. You know, it's been let's see, I want to say it was late mid to late forty something like that. You know that. So it's still it's entirely too long, but it hasn't been five thousand you know like almost five thousand years. But yeah, the the this thing of ah, let's see. Oh right, did I did I say four thousand seven hundred BC? Obviously that obviously would have to be two thousand seven hundred BC. Otherwise, yeah, that makes almost five thousand years. Uh, yeah. This is why I'm not a history teacher. Anyway, the, the, yeah, you know, once they actually get to the present day stuff, you know, you look at it and it's like, wow, things have not improved. Things have actually gotten worse. Like, essentially, what has happened is that the, the oppression, the stripping of natural resources and the exploitation, you know, has, has been industrialized. It's, it's, it's a much bigger, you know, it's, it, things are so much worse today. So I'm glad that they gave us some back, you know, like hypothetically, if you cut out the entire opening and you just go directly to conduct today, you know, we don't, like, it doesn't hit the same way, but they really needed to do something about that opening. Because as it is, it's this awkward, you know, it's going back and forth between playing out regular scene kind of thing and then this, you know, just montage of just, you know, because, again, it, it's ev everything that is in there needed to be conveyed at some point in the movie. But I don't think all of it needed to be at the start and just, yeah, I... Let's see, maybe, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I don't know that I have an answer, but, yeah, you know, as, as a reviewer, I would definitely say there are some issues with the, with the opening. So, I am not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad, but it fits with what came before, and... I think the ending is is good. Not not amazing, not groundbreaking, but it is yeah, it's it's satisfying. And it does not need Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. So this according to the internet, this only ha it has a mid credits but not post credits scene. And the mid credit scene is definitely worth watching. But, yeah. You know, basically, uh, let's see, there was like three minutes of credits, then the mid credit scene, and then you can, you know, leave and, and not miss anything. And... That brings us to the characters. So... Yeah. Teth Adam, as you might know by now, is played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I have to say, I mean, this man is a black hole of charisma. There's just, you, you, you look at him and it's just so boring in this movie and apparently nowhere else. I have to admit, I haven't seen him in very much. But he's incredibly charismatic in ah, uh, Scorpion King. You know, I I'm one of the defenders of that movie. It's a lot better. 
like if, if you if you haven't watched it for a while and everybody's just been you know crapping all over it give it a chance it's it's legitimately a fun film and he's really great in it you know and he yeah I, I think that is that, and he was, you know, he he was on Star Trek Voyager, playing, I guess, the Star Trek equivalent of himself, the the what is it, twenty sixth century equivalent of himself, you know, playing a wrestler, and he's not particularly important. He's just there. Like, I'm pretty sure they probably plastered his face all over the ads for that episode, and that was made. But you know, he's fine. He does. You know, he's convincing in the, you know, I'm not going to get into the debate of whether or not wrestling is real or, or not. But, yeah. You know, and I was glad to, you know, this is, yeah. You know, I've, I've been hoping he would end up in a, a comic book. And, yeah, he's been talking about this movie for, for some years. And, and this role, you know, originally he was supposed to show up in the first Shazam movie, you know, but... Yeah, like um, I wish this movie was better. I I think he and the character both deserve better. And let's see. right and um, yeah, uh, I think most of the yeah so. Aldous Hodge plays Carter Hall slash Hawkman, an archaeologist who is the reincarnation of the. Wow, why wasn't that in the movie? He's an archaeologist, the reincarnation of the Egyptian prince who enslaved black. Oh, oh, right. Well, yeah. So it would have to be the Kondok prince. Anyway, yeah, and you know he has the power of flight from his. Inth metal wings and he's the leader of the Justice Society of America and yeah you know like um, there's a lot it, it, these giant wings are not the only things that he has to carry he has to carry a lot of this movie there are multiple scenes of him and Black Adam who again I really like The Rock and I want to see him in more stuff but this is not the movie to, you know, I, I saw one, one critic say, why would you cast The Rock and then drain all of his charisma? And, yeah, so, you know, he's not getting a lot from Dwayne Johnson, and that's not the fault of either of them. I, I don't know whose idea it was, but it really doesn't seem, it, it doesn't strike me as particularly likely that Dwayne Johnson himself, like, just didn't do the, you know, charisma thing that he's known for you know there must some someone must have said he has to be like this you know so yeah Aldous Hodge is standing there he's carrying these scenes of discussion because Hawkman does not think that it is okay to kill people you know he he's the one who says heroes there are two kinds of people in this world with powers heroes and villains and heroes don't kill people and he's trying to compel Adam to stop killing people. And this is essentially the, like, yeah, you know, is it okay to use brutal violence, even murder? I, I suppose it's not always... Yeah, it's, it's not quite murder, but killing. Is it is it okay to kill people that if no one stops them, they might, you know, they're going to kill someone, you know? Because what Hawkman says is, they should stand trial. He, he's not like, no, no, let them go. He does think something needs to happen, but he believes that they have to stand trial. You know, so he's he's, I, I guess not the moral center, but he's he's very important for the movie. And I I'm not sure I've seen him in anything else. He does an incredible job. I I really hope. I would watch a Hawkman solo movie. I, you know, and holy crap. How did they not have archaeolog archaeologists? That's so cool. And reincarnated. Anyway, yeah. So, Noah Centineo plays Albert Al Rothstein or Adam Smasher. And he can control his molecular structure, manipulate his size and strength. 
I have to admit, it was very difficult to not think of Giant Man while watching. If, you know, I I don't know. Could they maybe have chosen a different? And and they have like he's he's closer to the Flash, the DCU Flash, than he is to to. Um, I can't believe I'm blanking on Ant Man's name, Paul Rudd, as Ant Man. You know, Scott. But. Yeah, it it is this you know, and and the mask really reminds me of the the Deadpool mask, and it's it's too bad the the Hawkman mask and wings didn't really make me think of something else. So yeah, so the the top choices for Adam Smasher according to IMDb trivia were Dacre Montgomery, Eli Gorey, Jacob Elordi, and Matthew Noska. I have no idea who any of those people are, but maybe you do. And now you've heard that they were yeah. Sarah Shahi plays Adriana Tomas slash Isis, a university professor, the resistance fighter, a resistance fighter in Kandak. And she is one of the, um, ah, yeah, Adriana is, is the, yeah, we, we follow her as she's trying to, to change things in Kandak. And, yeah, at first, Teth Adam's like, whatever, I have superpowers, I don't care about people who don't have superpowers. But he does gradually realize, you know, and, and it, yeah, it does help. You know, he doesn't recognize Kandak, but that is his country. You know, they are from the same country, just thousands of years apart. So when he comes back, you know, she tries to tell him, you know, you have the power the power is yours to take Kandak back from the oppressors, you know, and yeah, it, it was really, and, and yeah, you, you're watching as this guy, you know, like he's struggling with, is this something that he wants to, to take upon him? Because, you know, there, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. But some of it is revealed late in the movie, but he has his reasons for why he's behaving the way he does. And Marwan Kenzari plays Ishmael Gregor. And, yeah, I am not going to get too much into his character, but I think they did a good job. I, I felt he was legitimately compelling and just, yeah. And Quintessa Swindell plays Maxine Hunkel slash Cyclone a member of the JSA, the granddaughter of Red Tornado, who can control wind and generate sound. And, yeah, according to IMDb Trivia, the various young actresses considered for the role, Isabella Mer Merced, Leslie Grace, Thomas and Mackenzie, Elsa from Jojo Rabbit, I could definitely see that, absolutely. I, I, I mean... It would have kind of been a waste of her talents, though. This role does not call for that much. Catherine Newton. Haley Lou Richardson from... I've, I've seen her in, in Split. And, yeah, she, she could have done it. Although, again, I think, you know... Absolutely, I, I mean, no disrespect to Qu Qu Quintessa Swindell. I'd like to see her in stuff that is more challenging. I think she can pull it off here... I mean, she's, she's like, charming and, and sweet and, you know, yeah, like, cute and, and likable and, and that kind of thing. But there's not a lot of depth there. We, we get a little bit of a hint of a background, but they don't really delve into it and just, yeah. Mackenzie Foy, right, Teenage Murphy from Interstellar could have done it. Alexandra Ship, Storm and the... X-Men films where they're young, yeah, and Odessa Young, so yeah, the ones of them I know, yeah, you know, I feel like you gotta, you gotta give them more to, to chew on, you know, and if you haven't watched Jojo Rabbit in a while and you're like, Elsa wasn't that complex, watch it again, and take careful note of, of some of the, yeah, there's, there's more there than you might at first realize. Bodhi Sambongi as Amon, and he is the son of Adrian, and he is also someone that, you know, he, he idolizes Teth Adam, and, and I mean, Adriana does 
as well, but she's she's not a teenage boy, so she's a little better at like being a little bit more smooth and cool about it. Whereas he's like, oh wow, you okay? You could do this, this, and this. And I I do have to admit, he really reminded me of of Freddy from the first Shazam solo movie, and I'm like. You don't have to do that. Just be, I obviously we all like Freddy. He's a fun character. You don't have to just redo. I, I wish they had made him a little more different from from Freddy. But yeah, you know the he really really wants Teth Adam to take up the the mantle and and be the the savior of Kandak and yeah he and and he's clearly intelligent and basically like. Adrienne does want him to be a, a freedom fighter, but she says, you know, I, I'm not sure she specifically says, like, do it through, like, you know, l legal means, but she tells him, you know, yes, you are important to this fight. Go do your homework. You know, she's like, you you have to get an education so that you can fight the system from within basically and he's a teenage boy so he does he's not crazy about like that kind of boundary so yeah and and yeah i i throughout the movie i really really wanted him to be safe i you know i was i was nervous when he was in danger i was relieved when he was rescued, you know, so, yeah, it, it, it got that right, and, you know, other critics have already pointed out, there's definitely a bit of a, um, a Terminator 2 uh, thing going on, where, where Tef Adam is like the reprogrammed T-800, and Amon is like the young John Connor, uh, you know, he's, he's, he thinks it's super cool that there's this really, really powerful being, and, you know, yeah. And Pierce Brosnan plays Kent Nelson slash Dr. Fate. And, again, I, like, I really got Dr. Strange vibes off this guy. And I, actually, I guess Doc, the Dr. Strange character might be... Or wait, no, is the JSA are like super old, are they? A anyway, yeah. You know, the. Okay, so he's the son of an archaeologist who learned sorcery and was given the magical helmet of fate. Yeah, that's. I, I don't know why so little of this is in the movie. Like, I got the sorcery part and he does have the helmet, but I really didn't. I'm an archaeologist. Wow. So, uh, so there's a definite archaeology theme going on here, which does make sense for for people who are dealing with a guy who was entombed for five thousand years. And yeah, you know, it's been a while since I saw Port P the Pierce Brosnan in, in anything. I liked him in stuff he was in in the '90s. You know, I appreciate. A guy who, you know, he can he can play James Bond, but he can also keep his ego in check enough to be like the jerk new potential boyfriend in like ah, what's it called with with Robin Williams dressing up as a uh, late uh, Miss Miss Doubtfire, I think it is, yeah. You know he's he's willing to have Robin Williams throw fruit at the back of his head, and look insulted as like you know, I I, I like that I I really appreciate someone who, you know like. In the nineties, James Bond was like the icon you know like. And then he's also willing to to have, you know to do this this silly role in a, a goofy movie. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into how problematic that movie is, but yeah, um, he's still good. He's still really talented. Um, I suppose, yeah, I'm going to just briefly say there's this thing where, you know, he can see at least some parts of the future. 
and early in this movie he sees something that bothers him and for the rest of the movie you know like you may, we we aren't told right away what it is we can just tell he saw something that really bothered him and yeah you know ag again like it's not it's not necessarily much but there's something there you know there's a there's a really interesting character th thing there i i wish they you know they developed it further but at least it is there you know that is something like you know if if we're talking about like oh this is in some ways as bad as movies you know comic book movies from like 15 years ago like i have multiple times i have watched the original ghost rider i'm sure that the characters in the comic are interesting but in the movie, there's just, I mean, there's, I guess some of them have interesting designs, but there's nothing particular, you know, yeah, like, I get, you know, it's kind of cool that there's a, there's a water person, there's a fire person, and, and these things, but there's not really anything interesting there beyond just the, this, this kind of the visual, and, and like, you know, yeah, some of the, some of the effects at the time were, were, pretty decent but here like the idea of a psychic who spends a, a chunk of the movie worrying that the the thing he saw is going to come true and it, you know is there anything he could do to stop you know yeah not the not the biggest thing in the world but I appreciate that they did put something like that in there and uh, yeah as I already mentioned Viola Davis reprises her role as Amanda Waller from previous DCEU media and right and the yeah the 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 criminal organization intergame i uh were they were they the the international uh corporation or were they just muscle for the corporation i'm i'm not entirely sure but something like that one of those and yeah so the Cinematography was handled by Lawrence Schur, who has 30 credits as cinematographer. And one of them is Joker. This is somewhat more, like, compared to that. This is a bit more of a, of a, uh, what's the word, like, crowd-pleasing kind of thing. But there are definitely some interesting, like some of the, some of the angles, and some of the framing, and just yeah, there's there's definitely some some interesting stuff here. You can tell that this was made by someone who knows what they're doing. I would definitely like. I really don't think. I I don't know if, if it was his decision or whose, but. Someone decided that this should have speed ramping, and I kind of feel like, haven't we at this point kind of accepted that, look, I think speed ramping worked in 300. I do. I, I, there's, that movie is incredibly problematic, but I do think the speed ramping works for that movie. I don't think it works that well for, like, I, I'm, it's, I'm not sure I know of very many other movies that it works well for. Part of the thing with 300 is it's a legend being retold. That's why you can get kind of weird with speed and such. But the DCEU is largely this very gritty affair. You know, it's set in the real world in present day, largely present day. Yeah, you have to... And and the speed ramping here, I, you know what, to each their own. Your mileage may vary. I really didn't think it it worked. I I appreciate that some of the time they like they do this thing of like slowing down, to so you can appreciate just how fast Teth Adam is. But they definitely go overboard with it. I, I feel like they, it was fine to do once. And then we get it. Then we realize, oh, okay, he's actually that fast. I mean, there's this one part where it's not 
it's not as long, thankfully, as the actual Quicksilver scenes in the more recent X-Men movies. But yeah, it's like, you know, things are standing still and he's like, you know, yeah, doing things and then things go back to, to normal speed and then we see it, you know, yeah, we see the result of the things that he did and it's just, yeah, um... That's also a thing. Like I, I thought it would. I thought it was fun. It was unexpected the first time we got a scene like that. But then you know they did it more than once, and it's just like we we get it. It's it was fun once. It was especially fun because of the the music choice. But yeah, that brings us to the editing, was which is handled by John Lee and Michael L. Sale. And I have not watched anything Michael has edited. Uh, right, and John Lee, let's... Uh, wow, yeah. Um, this is only his second movie as editor, but then, you know, Michael has 14 credits, so maybe he was the one who was, like, primary... Yeah. And, yeah, he's edited comedy. He has... Uh, let's see, he also edited Red Notice, which I'm like 99% sure is at least in part an, an action movie. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the editing, like, you know, I already mentioned there, you have some issues with the opening. Uh, you know, there's definitely some editing should have been done to that. Some, some trimming. But yeah, like by and large, um, I could mostly tell what was going on and where things were like, which is, you know, that's not easy when you're dealing with this many super, like there's, there are scenes in this where, let's see, the superpower use, so you have... Like at least five people using their superpowers in the same scene you got you know it it's you have your work cut out for you as an editor to make sure that that things you know that that we can keep up with all of that and yeah they do they do a good job i i was very rarely confused about what was you know there there's a couple of times where you're supposed to be confused taken aback kind of thing and that brings us to the yeah so the the action scenes in general like you know I already mentioned good use of of uh, um, superpowers and such and you know you can largely follow they they did some interesting creative things with with some of them like some of the the heroes would use their powers in ways that I had not predicted, and like as I was watching, I was like, "I guess you can do that if that is your superpower." And, and again, a little bit of this is tempered with the fact that at the very you know the first time you see someone use their superpower, you know, other than Teth Adam because he has extremely similar superpowers to Jazam, and you know, yeah. There's there's definitely this thing of you know you're you're getting used to what exactly the their abilities are you know yeah the first time you see them but yeah you know by the time they do something really really wild with their powers it tends to be when you've gotten used to okay that's what they can do so the music was handled by composer Lorne Balfe who has 58 credits as composer and yeah there's a there's a lot and some of yeah some some comedy some action and i guess that is one angry dog holy crap um yeah you know, I thought the the original score was quite good, and I have to say, I don't know if it was Lone Wolf. I don't know exactly who was responsible, 
but this this is where I need a, a cap so I can tip it. The needle drops were just so good. I, I you know, at first I was a little like, really, really, we're doing. Should I should I give away? Let's just say they use a they use a '90s song. <sighs> yeah, they use a Smashing Pumpkins song at one point. But you know, yeah, I, I was like, you know, it, it works. Actually, it works. And yeah, there's just like I don't know, maybe half a dozen, a full dozen, very specific songs used in just. You know, sometimes it's a cool way, sometimes it's a funny way, sometimes it's both. But they really did a great job. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this is, you know, the the first Suicide Squad movie was attempting to do what James Gunn did on the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And then he went and did it for them with the Suicide Squad from 2021. I feel like this was a successful attempt at imitating that. And there's some really great sound design, like the superpowers, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's it's like people straining their faces as they're using their powers or, like, pretending they're getting pushed back or knocked down or something. And then, like, CG, which if you... There's a lot of CG and effects in general. If there's no audio for it, it's just not convincing. You know, it, it's, we, we can tell that didn't actually happen. There's, they staged that, you know. And, yeah, they, they did a really great job with the, with the sound design on this. The, the various powers, like, you can... If you isolated the different noises and just listened to them without uh, uh, context... For a lot of them, you'd be able to say, oh, that's that's that person's power, and what they're doing right now with the power is this. You know, and yeah, that's when you know they did their job well. And yeah, so this is an hour and 57 without end credits, and if you watch up to the mid credit scene, it is two hours exactly, and... I would definitely say, considering how little plot and depth and how underdeveloped the ideas are, they could have trimmed this down by, let's say, 15 minutes, and it would have been fine. Like, the, the, yeah. And I think that pretty much... So, yeah, the, yeah, the best element is the, um... This, this ethical dilemma of, is it right to use violence if you are stopping, you know, yeah. Or should you try to find a more moderate position? The worst aspect is definitely how much it struggles with the, the tone and, like, I... I would have been happy with any of the three movies that this was. But the the fact that they tried to make it all three just feels feels awkward. Like, you can very much tell that this is supposed to... Like, you know, they're not sure what's going to happen next with the Justice League. So they're trying to set up something else that they can fall back on. And it just... That didn't need to be in the Black Adam movie. Because, like... The one thing that that brings in is that Teth Adam, you know, can wipe the floor with most regular human beings, so you have to have superpowered people to, you know, for there to be any challenge. You know, like, even even if you have, like, I mean, some of the, some of the enemies that he faces have, like, fighter jets and such, and he's still just wiping the floor with them, so, yeah, you, you needed some, but... Should that maybe have been Shazam? You know, like, if, I feel like it really wasn't necessary. If they're not going to spend that much time on his background in 2700 BC, if they're going to bring him to the present day so soon, so early into the movie, 
just have it be Shazam that he goes up with. Like, that is what we want, you know. So, the JSA in this, it's essentially franchise friendly. And, and that's the thing. Like, if you just want this thing of, you know, someone saying, no, Teth Adam, you, ha you can't kill people. That makes you a villain. That could have been Shazam. Like, I feel like that's where his head is at by the end of the first solo movie, you know. And that movie also teased, yes, we are getting Black Adam in, in the future. And, you know, that one was also in part produced by The Rock, you know. And it just, yeah, it, it feels like they were scared. Like, at, at some point in the process, you know, someone at the studio got cold feet, they panicked. And they're like, we can't, we can't make this extremely dark and, and gritty and brutal movie about just Black Adam. You know, we, we got in, you know, because they, they did struggle with, you know, not going total yeah, grim, grim dark in the early days of the DCU. You know, they, the Man of Steel and Batman v Superman struggled with critics and... Yeah, they. I, I feel like they were they were worried that they would end up with that kind of thing again, and so they added this franchise building building stuff and this kind of quippy lighter tone stuff, and yeah, it just it's it's anyway. The so yeah the the worst thing according to others is this thing of yeah actually yeah the this thing of how it's basically three movies in one and yeah I was the thing I was most worried about is that we would end up with another one of these. I try not to talk about the bad of the the DCU, but yeah, there are some there are some bad movies in the DCU. I was a little worried that this would be another one, but it is, you know, it's nowhere near as bad as the the legitimately bad ones. And let's see. yeah, so the the thing I was most looking forward to was definitely The Rock and. Yeah, like it's it's cool to see him kick ass, but I yeah, I I do not know why you would cast someone with so much charisma and then ask him to not yeah. So, the trailers do give at least a little too much away, but also give you a good idea of what the movie is like. And... Let's see. Right. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 55% on the tomato meter, based on 77 reviews, which does make it rotten. And, yeah, 42 fresh, 35 rotten. And there is no consensus yet. And on Metacritic, it has a score. <sighs> right. It's, yeah, it's one of those times where it's not, it is, it is misbehaving. Um. Oh, here we go. Yeah. All it needed was a refresh. And this is where... There we go. And... Yes, on Metacritic, it has a 45 out of 100, based on 28 reviews, 6 positive, 16 mixed, 6 negative. 
and uh, right on IMDb. Yeah, I'll. I'll um, it's better this way. So that the stream doesn't. Right, so on IMDb, it has a 7.6 out of 10 based on 2,131 votes. And this is where you're supposed to show me what people voted, but I guess you're not going to do that. Um. Really? Yeah, it looks like it's just not good. okay. I will, yeah. So there's probably going to be a little lag on the stream as it, yeah. Now I'm speed ramping. I've become the very thing I swore to destroy. Okay, so 42.7% gave this a 10. 28.8 percent gave it an 8. 10.4 gave it a 9. I mean I feel like those are a tiny bit high but you know. 7.4 gave it 1. That's low. That is definitely the movie does not deserve a 1 out of 10. 4 percent gave it a 7. I feel like that's probably a, a pretty... I, I, I think a lot of people were still high from the fun of the movie and didn't stop to think, but, you know, to each their own. 2.2 gave it 6, 2.1 gave it 5, and just under 1% gave it 4, 3, and 2 each. And... Let's see... I have already talked some about the the special effects. I guess I'll just briefly... I felt like they largely had weight to them, which is the big problem you sometimes run into with CG. It, it, things feel weightless, and yeah, like it, when, when someone hit someone else with something that in reality was CG, I largely felt like, oh wow, that actually behaved as if they did hit them with a real thing. That you know, there's a lot of you know, it's not always planes, but there's a lot of flying vehicles. In there's a lot of scenes that feature at least a few flying vehicles. One, one or of, you know, between one and four, and yeah, like by and large, it felt like oh no, oh, the laws of physics do still exist. You know, it's not that it's, that that's not why these people are flying. It's not that the laws of physics don't still exist. It's just that they've built these machines that are good at, you know, getting past that little barrier. But obviously, you're still going to see, you know, there's still going to be air resistance and gravity and weight to, you know. Yeah, I've, I felt like they really made sure to, to put that. Because that really, when you see someone, when someone animates something flying, you know, a, a flying ship, or, a, you know, there, there are several, like, they have these, I, I, I think they call them sky bikes, actually, yeah, and they basically are, they look like motorcycles, except they fly, you know, when you have something like that, you really have to bring your A game, or the animation is just going to be, like, ridiculous, you know, I guess if there's some really good stunt work, there's some, you know, again, like the, the fights, you know, for all the CG there is, you, it does feel like people are getting, people are being hit, people are being wounded. And the, I guess that is pretty much. So the uh, let's, yeah, um, if you are a fan of DC, of the DCEU, you know comic books and comic book movies in general, 
I think there's a pretty good chance you're gonna enjoy this. I would especially recommend it to people who, you know, if if you if you are more if you care more about just you know a good time at the movie, something that provides a lot of action and cool special effects and such, you know that that's probably more. That's the crowd that are really gonna love that then. Some of them already have really loved this movie. The people who really demand that, like, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy has some really great action, great visuals, but it also has, like, character and depth and, like, compelling stories. that You, you can watch these movies over and over and, like, still be really amazed by how well these stories hold up and how you know and and the things that are are being conveyed the the themes and ideas you know if that is the kind of thing that you, you know if that is you know if, if you think that is a comic book movie and anything that doesn't have that is is below this is not really a movie for you i i wish it was i i would love to be able to say that this is as good as as those as that trilogy but you know very few people can reach no one's level. That's just, you know, that's that's life as a genius. Anyway, yes, I give this. I suppose, yeah, yeah. My my, if I have to be completely objective, I give this a seven out of ten. But my more subjective personal opinion is eight. Badass Beatdowns by Black Adam out of 10. And, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind watching this again very soon. Um, and I look forward to, like, you know, in half a year when it's in the... when, when the library has a, a DVD or Blu-ray copy, you know, I, I almost always watch it after that. You know, yeah, I look forward to that. You know, some sometimes... There are, there are some movies where I decided to, to hold off. I've, you know, I've only watched once movies like the the Hellboy from 2019, Wonder Woman 1984, uh, what's it called? Right on the tip of my tongue. Um, Blood... Not blood sport, right? Because that's the that's the character from Suicide Squad. Um, Bloodshot, I think. Yeah, Vin Diesel. You know, those are movies I could have watched more than once, and I chose not to. So, I suppose the yes, I am just really quickly gonna write it in, and here we go. So, I. This is my ranking of all DCEU, not all DC, but all DCEU movies, worst to best. Hold on. Am I... Is this updated? Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman 1984, Snyder Cut, 2016 Suicide Squad, 2017 Justice League, Man of Steel, Black Adam, Wonder Woman 1, Aquaman, Shazam, Birds of Prey, and... 2021 Suicide Squad. And that brings us into the thoughts sections. So I am just really quickly going to note the time code. And there we are. Yes. So. Okay. Slow document load. Is it? There we go. Uh, there we go. So, notes taken while watching. I like the lightning during the uh, lightning storm during the opening logos. And, you know, it, I feel like it's probably a cliche, but this thing of, you know, before Rome, before. Babylon, there was Kandak, you know, but 
it works. You know, you're like, wow, civilization before Rome and Babylon, huh? And yeah, so the the opening establishes the Eternium, which I mean, ultimately, is it that important to the movie? I mean, we we see not long after. Teth Adam comes back, we see that Eternium is basically the one thing that can actually injure him, and then he's also injured by Sabak and Ishmael's body, but did that have anything to do with Eternium? Wasn't that Sabak? Or was that the powers of the crown? Yeah, I... And there's also one point where, like, Eternium from one of those sky bikes hurt to Thadam. yeah anyway the you know yeah it turns into an actual scene you know in the opening with the narration and you know it's like no, no no let's get the Eternium to the to the guard and you know the the kid is like ah see he just wants the the reward from from the king ah here we go and you know stabs him throws him over the that was very 300, you know, stabbing him and then throwing him into a, a, just, nobody even pushed me. But, yeah, it was, the, the yeah, and, and he's like, this is an, you know, I have to admit, th this kid did a pretty good job, considering how, how melodramatic this called for him to be. You know, he's like, you killed him, you know, and, and the, you know, his father saves him, and it's like, I have, when I first saw it, I was like, are we supposed to pretend that that isn't The Rock? Because that's obviously The Rock playing his father. And then later when it seemed like, no, 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 the kid is Teth Adam, I was like, oh, right. Because, yeah, sometimes in movies and TV shows, someone will play their the father of the character they normally play. And it's like, oh, yeah, because, you know, they look alike. So, but, yeah. Let's see. The, um, right, and the yeah, the the opening also establishes that you know instead of the it's it's the it's it's this that that they do as a you know sign of of resistance passive resistance against the the oppressors and yeah you know i appreciate that and that's like also yeah i mean yeah i don't know i i have a soft spot for that kind of thing i i really like when you know now i, I don't know maybe it'll be a thing on social media maybe a bunch of people will be like that on their on their social media so yeah and yeah like I mentioned earlier I I think it is very effective there we go I don't think I mentioned but yeah from here on out spoilers for the rest of the movie for, for the entire movie but yeah you know it cuts from the the you know 2700 BC to present day and Kandak is still occupied and I really like when the, you know, Amon is like, you are a neo-imperialist bully. And, and just this whole speech that just like, yeah, this kid, you know, maybe he doesn't need to do his own work. It seems like, I, is there anything left they can teach him? And, you know, yeah, he wants to go with Adrian and, the, and his uncle and the, you know, but the, the you know, yeah, she says, you know, you're not old enough for this kind of and yeah, I really appreciate you know both in ancient Kandak and present day Kandak, kids are are beaten and brutalized for no good reason. And yeah, so the the inter gang try to get the the crown, and so you know Adrian, it's it's very clever. You know she's like, please. The, the what was it like her final words and she was like please tell my brother and then she she recants this thing that summons at you know this is very clever that's yeah 
and Yeah, it was very cool seeing Adam, you know, getting out of the, the tomb area and, you know, fighting off all these helicopters and such. And Amanda Waller has Hawk Guy. I couldn't help. Hawkman. I know it's Hawkman. You know, has, has him assemble the JSA and... Okay, I'm I'm not I could be wrong, but was the was the old Adam Smasher the Fonz? Did I like and yeah, I gotta say the, the introductions for the JSA members really remind me of the twenty sixteen Suicide Squad and it's it's nowhere near as bad as that because after all they you know in in this they just get like one brief thing of like you know introductory voiceover and we see them do something kind of cool or have an interaction with another character and then we move on it doesn't you know and the plot has already started when it you know so it's not the the big problem was that they kept you know Instead of just introducing them and then moving on to the plot, they would introduce, you know, introduce one, then two, then three, and then start over and introduce the same ones with new scenes. And Teth Adam burns the, the face of the Superman poster that Amon has, which was a, a neat little, because that is supposed to be, you know, what was it that they said that with the introduction of Black Adam, the power not power balance the the yeah the, you know power weight shift so I, I forget what it's called but yeah you know and yeah Adam talks about that he does use violence and he really does not like doors. Like, wow. The, I, I don't know what a door did to... Is he confused, maybe? Does he think that it was a door that shot his son with an arrow? Because he is not, like, he's not having it. I, you know, they, and, and the, the... They have this joke where Dr. Dr. Fate is like, did they not have doors... Back when you, you know, it's a, yeah, we used it to get in and out of rooms. I was being sarcastic. And it's like, so does Teth Adam just not understand that he's, because later he uses sarcasm. Was, was that sarcasm? You know, and, and yeah, I, I guess he didn't. I think I do think it would have been very funny. Hopefully, there's there's, there's like an outtake where you know after Doctor Fate is like, well, what, you know, why don't you use doors? And you know, Teth Adam like looks, you know, and is like, a door murdered my entire family. You know, just yeah. And. when they showed the quick draw scene from the good the bad and the ugly on the TV I was already like okay this this might actually bump the score I'm, I'm just kidding but that that's that's so cool that's so the if you want to hear me say a bad word about Sergio Leone I don't know what to tell you that's probably never gonna happen Okay, there were some there were some problematic aspects, but other than that, he was unbelievably talented, and everything I've seen is, you know, 
every movie I've seen that he's directed is absolutely amazing. I didn't think that they were actually gonna do the because th because they actually have you know, and and they use the the uh, that that's one of the needle drops. They use the score from the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's this thing of like, you know, who who can draw first, and then like the score is is like knocked out, and I think they is there maybe like rock music instead or something, you know, once he fires lightning. And let's see. Yeah, and we see Hawkman saving intergang people and you know, he gets booed and he he doesn't back down. He's like, I don't know what crimes they have committed, but they deserve their day in court. You know, and then Adam shows up and murders them and the crowd goes wild, so yeah. And yeah, I thought it was entertaining watching the JSA fight Teth Adam, and I mean, it was kind of clever of Doctor Fate to to set up an illusion of the ancient Kandak, and yeah, like Teth Adam was briefly actually, you know, yeah, he he it he um. It took him by surprise. And, yeah, you know, the first time the Doctor Fate... Uh, actually, yeah, I already mentioned, are they clones or are they illusions? And he multiplies himself. And, yeah, and, you know, they chant, Long live the champion. I can't help but wonder if that was maybe a wasted opportunity for a queen needle drop. That would definitely, you know, he'd have something in common with Shazam. And, you know, and Adrian points out, 27 years of occupation and the Justice Society only shows up when someone fights for us. You know, and it's just, yeah, it's an excellent point. And that is, yeah, 27 years of occupation. So we are, that is substantially closer to the, the... Yeah, I, I really think the, the whole Kandak occupation thing is a, a Gaza Strip. Yeah. And, you know, Adrian says, so if you're done destroying our, our city, you know, it's just, and I really like, yeah, you know, Justice Society of Team America. And... We get a flashback, and uh, you know, Adrian confronts to Adam that he destroyed uh, Kondok. It wasn't, uh, you know, yeah, and and it was, you know, it was revenge, not to, yeah, and we see Ishmael going for the crown, and. Right, and I, I like when, when you know, I've, I've, for a while, they're struggling to just keep Teth Adam from killing every single person. So it's like, you know, look, if we, if we take prisoners, we can ask them questions. You know, and, and he's like, you know what, that's, okay, yeah. Can either of you fly? <laughs> and he you know, flies up and he's like, okay, so the first person to tell me the truth is gonna live you know and he he drops one of them and then the other one like okay here's the truth and drops him anyway that's, that's pretty badass that's pretty badass and you know Hawkman flies in and and grabs them and he's like you you let them fall yeah cuz I knew you'd catch them good job yay us I have to admit the the thing of life is the only path to death, and then you have to reverse it. Death is the only path to life. Yeah, like I was, I was kind of surprised. I have to admit, I think it would have had a stronger effect if this thing of 
oh, you have to reverse it for when it's for when it's underworld or something like that. You know, I feel like if they had had just like yeah, maybe maybe early on, Amon is like dealing with his homework, and his uncle is like, well, don't you have that backwards? And Amon is like, no, uncle, when it's underworld. It's backwards. Don't you remember anything from school? So, something like that, you know. Because as it is, it's just like, oh, I... All right, then. I guess that's how that works. And, yeah, the JSA and Teth Adam versus Intergang was also ent entertaining to watch. When Dr. Fate said, when it's time... Uh, let's, it, yeah, when it's time for us to say goodbye, I will... Ah, uh, wait. Yeah, when it's time for us to say goodbye, I'll... I'll, I'll let you know. Some, something like that, you know. The moment he said that, I was like, oh, so it's not Hawkman who's gonna die, it's Dr. Fate. That's why he's wording it like, when we have to say goodbye. When it's time for us to say goodbye. You know, instead of him saying, when it's time for me to say goodbye to you, or when it's time for you to say goodbye to the rest of us, or something, you know, but, no, apparently, he did see, he, you know, he did see Hawkman die, but he also found out a way to, yeah. And... Uh... What on earth did I write? Oh, right, right. The, yeah, that's the thing with how we worried about if Amon would survive. And, yeah, we, we get the, the flashback. Hurut was the liberator, not Teth Adam. Adam wasn't chosen. It was Hurut sharing it like we also saw in the Shazam solo movie. And, yeah, they go to a Task Force X base and there's at least one of the people from the 2021 Suicide Squad movie and Ishmael comes back and yeah yeah and and Dr. Fate says my vision has only shown me calamity so I guess you know the vision has been showing reruns of die another day and yeah like Sabak using Ishmael's body was legitimately like yeah it was, it was you know it, it was pretty like one note villain kind of thing but it was a kind of cool design and okay so apparently Hawk like Hawkman has to fly like he says it's 20, we're 20 miles out, we'll be there in 20 seconds. So that's one mile per set, that's, that's 1,000, like that's a little, you know, normally we talk about like, oh, you know, if you're driving like 100 miles an hour, that's a lot. If you're driving one mile a second, that's like ludicrous speed. There we go. And yeah, so for most of the film, it is JSA versus Adam. It's only at the end that Sabak shows up, and I get it. I do. F I do think that if there was more of a, a consistent presence, because because it is kind of like you know, the first time that Adam and the JSA meet, they fight, and then they stop fighting for a little while. And they kind of try to see if they can talk, you know, if they can, like, because, because, like, he and the team are both very capable, you know, neither of them really want to have to fight the other, they just kind of, like, okay, if there's no other way, I guess we can, just, but let's see if there's some kind of way that we can, that we can do this without... Because, you know, who's who's going to win? You know, they're basically, they're hoping to tire him out. You know, eventually he'll be so exhausted that he'll be like, okay, fine, just I am. 
you know, but the, because because that's the safe word, but yeah, I I think that it would have been cool if who you know again like I feel like it should have just been Shazam, but yeah, if 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 Teth Adam was fighting someone that he was like consistently fighting, you know, throughout the the movie instead of this kind of back and forth and then just yeah but I get why like you know once you unleash Sabak in this movie it's like I mean he's either gonna keep fighting until he kills everyone of his enemies or there's not really you know you, you can't really have him like off you know somewhere else plotting like you can with a lot of villains you know I mean Loki and Ultron did have to accomplish something before the thing that they were, were trying to do, you know, Thanos, yeah. But with this, it's like, I mean, the moment you have Sabak, you know, what is gonna... Yeah. And, you know, Hawkman gets really close to Sabak, and Sabak apparently has really bad halitosis. And, yeah, I kind of appreciate, like, apparently, you know, like, the, the truth is complex. So they kind of simplified the myth, you know. In in reality, what happened with Hurut and Teth Adam was this complex, you know, soap opera melodrama kind of thing. But what people remember, what people have been told for, for you know all these generations, is just no, no, no. He was a son of a, you know, he he was a slave. Then he got superpowers. He stopped the bad guy, and now we don't know what he is. You know, because that, that is some, like, some, some, you know, like the, the child, the childhood versions of myths are sometimes very sanitized and don't really reflect all the, the stuff that, you know, and then when you look at the entire myth, it's actually very complex and, you know, yeah. And Sabak kicks Dr. Fate's helmet, and we see that, you know, evidently, Kandak, much like Thermopylae, Sparta, has naturally occurring grind my, grand, ground microphones. Yeah. And... Yeah, you know, it was it was entertaining watching Adam and Ishmael slash Sabak fight. And I really like this thing, you know, the, the uncle runs out and is like gonna fight zombies and he's like, It's okay, I die from electricity. Knowing the cause of your death can be freeing. I really appreciate you know, you 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 know in real life, I would not want to know what kills me and when and, you know, this whole thing. But yeah, like, in fiction, it's frequently like, oh, you know, if you know when you're going to die, it's going to be worse, you know, the, the... So, yeah, having this flip side of, no, I mean, he knows he's not going to die from a zombie, so go to town on those bad boys. And... Yeah, you know, by the by the end, like there are basically zombies everywhere in in Kandak. It it seems, you know, which which means that Kandak has something in common with, I'd say, about a third of video games. And I appreciate, you know, Adam. Like he tries sitting on the throne for like two seconds and then he smashes it. It's like you know very clear message we should all be standing up no there should be no one ruler and you know and and he's like Teth Adam that's kind of an outdated name isn't it so what what should we call you well you know it's oh crap I think I winked with my wrong eye anyway yeah the the Holy crap, that's a lot of... I really thought I'd written something on all these pages, but I guess I haven't. Anyway, yeah, you know, title card, so 
yeah, he will henceforth be known as Black Adam. And yeah, the mid credit scene, you know, Amanda, you know, let's see, she said, okay, you don't like my cell, fine, now can dock is your cell. If you leave it, I will send, you know, I will send someone to destroy you. And he's like, no one from this world can destroy me. And I, I know he didn't deliver it like that, but I feel like it, it's just befitting. When you when you say a line like that, you gotta do a, a voice. And, you know, she's like, no, but maybe there, maybe there's someone not from this world, you know, not not from Earth, some, something like that, you know. And Henry Cavill, I mean, I, I thought he was out, but it's super cool if he still wants to do this. Because um, this this was filmed recently, right? I, I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, in, in the Shazam bit, the, the you know, it's, it's only the torso. We don't see his head. That is a, such a perfect, like, Freddy's like, ah! you know, that's, that's unbelievably funny. I've watched the movie at least three times now. Gets me every time. Like, so freaking funny. Now, the, the, uh, let's see. Yes. The, the, um, yeah. You know, he, he walks up and he's like, it's been a long time since I've seen the people of this planet, so, uh, you know, so so spooked. Adam, we have something to discuss. You know, just and that's it. That's it exactly. That's how Superman is. Not like, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Is just we have something to discuss. I I know he didn't say. You know, that was that was the that was the Batman line from from the Snyder cut. But you know, when he says, "Not impressed," that's not Superman. The line in the original Justice League. You know, let's let's see. He, he uh, yeah, it's cause, cause the ah, Steppenwolf keeps saying truth. You know, he says it over and over and over, and then Superman, you know, flies in. I'm a big fan of truth, but I'm also a big believer in justice. That's Superman, you know. But yeah, the yeah. I look forward to seeing the 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 fight between the two of them. I'm not sure why this movie couldn't have been the fight between the two of them, since again, like I mean, what is Hawkman and the? I, like I guess, I guess the idea is supposed to be that well, it's Amanda Waller sending, and you know, it's in Kandak. She doesn't want like you know do-gooders going there and you know getting involved in the, you know, it's like how she would usually, uh, yeah, and I mean, according to the the 2021 Suicide Squad movie, she is having some bad luck with with losing su su Suicide Squad, you know, Suicide Squad people are getting released, and yeah, actually, I guess maybe she thinks that, because, because like, ah, Bloodsport said you know, we have this evidence, we're going to release it, if if you come after us or our families, maybe she's worried if she sends another Suicide Squad team, he'll also release it, you know. But, yeah, it, it just, like, why wasn't Superman the, the yeah. It, it feels like it's just franchise building. And again, I did like, like, I liked all four. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it's four JSA members, you know, and I would like to see them in more stuff, although I don't know how many more years Pierce Brosnan has in him, but, you know, I mean, as long as he's game and the. Yeah. Yeah, I. I I would have been very happy to see just a JSA movie that didn't have Black Adam, although in that case they probably shouldn't call it Black Adam, but the Black Adam movie should either have been set in 2700 BC or been Black Adam and Superman. It doesn't really make... Like, she literally, like, at the, it's the same person. It's the same person. At the end of the movie, she's like, I'm going to send Superman after you. 
And it's like, you could have done that the whole time? Like, why Why didn't you do that earlier? Why did you send the the big strong guy and the, the girl who can do, you know, tornadoes and the guy who can fly and the magic dude when you have Superman? Like, it's just, it's such a ridiculous, like, because she knew this was after she had seen video of what he can do. He had destroyed all these intergang vehicles. Why would you not, like... Yeah, it just, and, and this is, you know, I, I already quoted, you know, no nobody's decisions make sense in this movie, was what one of the critics said, which, yeah. And I'm not sure I actually have very much that I had written before. I'm just really quickly going to see if I just want to make it part of the... Oh, that's right, yeah. I actually, the only thing I have... That I had written, yeah, about of of spoilers before, was that you know I recently rewatched the first Shazam movie and the wizard said that Black Adam, you know, he don't he didn't name, he didn't mention Black Adam, but he said, you know, they chose poorly, and the you know this guy released the seven deadly sins, leading to genocide, and that is like one hundred percent not at all what we saw in this movie so I don't know I mean I guess this is yet another bit of retconning which by now the DCEU I think more of its lore is retconning than just you know stuff that's introduced so yeah I mean and and like I mean the Rock himself helped produce the, that movie. They didn't even need to have the explanation in there of why there's only one sorcerer left. You know. Yeah. Anyway. I don't particularly mind. If, if they, you know. It's just a little annoying. Like, literally the only thing we knew about Black Adam before this movie. In the DCU, I mean. Not in the comics. Literally the only thing they retcon it and like for all this just yeah like this movie should have been either Shazam you know Shazam versus Black Adam Superman versus Black Adam or Superman and Shazam versus Black Adam but to have neither and then just have Superman show up there at the end and now it's also like wait does that mean that Next time we see Black Adam, Superman is going to be involved, but Shazam isn't. I mean, I get, you know, we're getting Shazam 2 in, like, what is that, two months? One month, two months, some, something, you know. So, yeah, you know, they're not going to they're not gonna have him show up in a mid credit scene and then have a full movie that Black Adam never shows up. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe Black Adam will show up in one of the mid credit, you know, a mid credits or post credit scene of Shazam 2, but I would be very surprised if he was, like, the main villain or something, because they have a different villain, you know, the, I, I want to say it's the, the Daughters of Atlas or something, so, yeah. Anyway, go, you know, if, yeah, let me know in the comment section, you know, what did you think of this movie? What, you know, if you were to change something about it, what would you change? and why and yeah you know what yeah who do you think stands the better chance against black adam superman or shazam if if you have to go with just one of them so if you like this video please thumbs up subscribe hit that little bell like it enslaved the people of kandak there should be a link to my main channel page and one to one one or two or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. Recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my movie next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching the recording, and I will catch you next time.